Poly packs. All right, going through this box, this vintage box seems to be broken out by teams. A lot of mid '80s, late '70s cards. Uh, from the last time, I think the best card I got so far was the Johnny Bench. Um, let me put that. Can we do that there? Let me put that there. Ah, doesn't look good there. So that was the best one. We got a bunch of a couple of other ones too, but that was the, I think the best card I pulled. Um, so we'll go through this row, see if we can do this row in less than 10. If we can do that, then we'll jump into the other one. What we'll have here is just some Brewers and Rangers. So a mix of different teams here. So this one looks like all Rangers. So for the Rangers in the in this time period, at best, there's Charlie Huff. I think, he got, I think Charlie Huff made it to the Rangers Hall of Fame. Got a bunch of his rookies. Um, 72 rookies, I think. I think Wax Pack ended up with like five, and I ended up with three um, from that bin we pulled with all the vintage cards. So, and this is, this is vintage enough. I mean, yeah. Vintage in the sense of it's definitely older now, but you know, I, early '80s I don't think is really considered true vintage yet. Or I think this is still more the this is the beginning of the junk wax. Um, maybe the early '80s, '83, '82, '81 didn't have as many runs as possibly the '85, '86, '87, and then beyond that did. But this is the beginning of the the junk wax error but the rangers i don't i don't really know who oh, now we're getting into the mariners i don't know who from this grouping would be able to kind of pull oh, here we got some Paul, a couple of Paul Molitors, 85. Oh, that's not bad. Let's see, here we go. A lot of pirates. And Bob, who we got this collection from, and I keep saying we, because it's Wax Packs and I, we go to this guy and dude just has rooms full of cards and i don't know exactly he, he wasn't a card dealer he was just he worked as a marketing some sort of marketing rep or something he worked for the Bra he worked for the braves huge fan of the pirates worked for the braves did a little stint with the yankees and then um i think also the red sox so i don't know if he did marketing or, or what exactly he did for them but he has a lot of cool stories. I mean, a lot of he was there in the early '90s when the Braves were making their run. You know, Tommy Glavin and all them. Um, I don't know exactly when he was there for the Yankees. I think maybe the beginning of the Jeter era is when he was there for the Yankees, possibly. Um, and then in the Red Sox. He was there towards the tail end with like Nomar and stuff like that before, I think, moving out of baseball. So, but I guess he was just being in baseball, he was a big collector of cards and amassed a really, really, really large collection. But these are all pirates. No one good to write home about there. We got some Phillies in this one. Vaughn Hayes. Like he, I feel like he was a fan favorite. I was never a Philly fan, but they got Opeachy. And I'll put all the Opeachy ones aside. Bob Boone. The Boone family is, uh, again, another one where a lot of baseball family, if you will. A lot of people out of the, out of the, uh, Billy's coming out of there, uh, the Boone's coming out of the, into the Major League. We'd like to see like a Mike Schmidt here or something. I'm not 
Looks quite sure we're going to get that. Here's Joe Morgan late in his career. Hall of Famer. Dave Stewart. Not quite as good. Wow, Dave Stewart. That's way off on that one. <laughs> Yeah, Joe Morgan must have finished out his career with uh, with the Phillies. Darren Dalton, I think 85 was his rookie, so it's, I'm not sure. Maybe that is his rookie card. I'm not sure. Steve Carlton as a uh, league leaders, but Manny Trillo, that's okay. Here's a Mike Schmidt card, not exactly the Mike Schmidt I was looking for, but Larry Boa, Opeachy. All right, we'll throw all those aside. Yeah, so I noticed those last time, and it would just happen to be looking at the back and seeing the different coloring of it. So usually you put, they have Opeachy in the front, but um, I guess that was before they started doing that, so. All right, so a lot of commons to go through. Let's see, got, got Padres here. Not much to get unless we get a uh, Tony Gwynn. Oop, almost, <laughs> I was over hopeful for one second there, but, uh, I doubt we will get a Tony Gwynn in here. Dave DeBrecky ended up having cancer in his arm, broke his arm on a pitch. In the literal act of pitching, it snapped. He had, a, he had cancer in there. I guess it had deteriorated his arm. He had uh, he rehabbed and made a comeback, but never quite the same pitcher. Obviously, a lot to come back from. Ken Singleton. So now we're into the Orioles here, so it would be great to get a Cal Ripken rookie, but I doubt it. But even like an 83 or a 84 Cal Ripken would be pretty cool. Uh, anybody else from the Orioles that we might want is another OPG. I'm not quite sure who else we would have. Hmm. Alrighty, let's get through this last bit here, and we'll take another break. So Terry Pellington, we already we already kind of went through some of the. Oh, there we go. Oh, so Joe Morgan jumping around a lot at the end of his career. So here with the A's, we already had his card with the. Phillies, 84, right? He went to the Phillies and over to the A's. I think he ends up with the Astros, maybe? I'm not so sure. Definitely jumped around a lot there towards the end. Mm, Bruce Sutter, most saves. He's a good closer there. And moving into the Mets, and Mookie Wilson, Sid the Kid Fernandez, and now back to the Cardinals, Art Howe before he came a manager, George Foster, George Foster really had some good years there in the 70s, maybe even the early 80s too, Frank Howard, uh, just real quick, let's just see what he did. Um, it's hard to read, but yeah, from basically 75 through, uh, with the exception of one year. I mean, one time he had 40 home runs, 120 RBIs, 52 home runs, and 149 RBIs. So that was 77 and 78. So he was, man, he was a, 
machine there for a few years. But basically from 75 on, up until just at least, what was that, this 85 card? He had hit 20 or more home runs, right? Yeah, he led the league in RBIs for three years in a row. Led the league in the majors at one time. Even still in 85, had 21 RBIs, 77... I mean, 21 home runs, 77 RBIs. You know, so... Yeah, he, he had some power. All right, no Dwight Gooden, no Daryl Strawberry, or anything like that. So, all right, what do we end up with this one? So we had the Johnny Bench, got a couple of uh, Joe Morgans, right, Hall of Famer. Got a bunch more, a couple more, the Opeachy, the, uh, I think, was this a 77? Opeachy, and then a couple of Paul Molitors. So, mid-level mid Hall of Famers here, you know, the, the mid-80s cards. Nothing too exciting about those, but you never know who might be in here. So let's uh, keep on pushing on.